In this video, I would like us to take a look at the strength of acid and bases. Strength of acid and bases. So let's get started. So the strength of an acid depends on its ability to transfer a proton to a base to form a conjugate base. So when we have an acid that is HA, so let's say HA dissociating in a aqueous solution to form H plus and H plus and A minus. So in this particular equation, we say that the acid is HA and it's releasing H plus in the cure solution and the conjugate phase is A minus, right? So how do we tell the strength of this acid? Now, if the acid is able to release or uh, dissociate completely in solution to produce this and this, they will say that that particular acid is a strong acid. What if it is a base? Now, if it is a base, we would have been looking at, um, let's say MOH giving us M plus and OH minus. So in this case, the base would have been dissociating completely to give us hydroxide anion in solution. So basically that's what a strong acid and a strong base is. So when you look at the chart here, when you look at this, this is a strong acid, right? This is a strong acid. Now when a strong acid, so let's put it here, strong acid. When a strong acid dissociates in solution, it will give you equal concentrations of H plus and A minus or the conjugate base, which will have the same concentration as the original concentration of the acid. That means that everything has dissociated. So if we take the vertical here to be the concentration of the acid, it will produce equal concentration in that particular solution, H plus and A minus. But what if it is a weak acid? So let's say this is a weak acid. Weak acid would prefer to stay in solution like the way they used to be in their original states than to dissociate to produce H plus and A minus in solution. So if this is a weak acid, if this is a weak acid, when it put this acid in water, it's not going to, to dissociate. So it will only produce a little amount of H plus and A minus as a conjugate base. And the bulk of that is going to remain as it is. So that is a weak acid. Now in our previous video, we did mention, um, we look at the seven strong acids. So you can check our playlist for that. We talk about seven strong acids when we're looking at Bronsted and Lowry acids and bases. Okay, so what happens with strong acid? Now, just so you know, in this video, we'll be focusing more on the acid. We're we'll focusing more on the acid. Okay, so let's say we have, um, right, this is our acid dissociation equation. So when we apply the law of mass action, what is going to happen is that we'll have Ka to be equal to the concentration of H plus times the concentration of A minus, all of this divided by the concentration of HA. Good. So when you look at this expression, it gives us concentration of the hydronium in solution times the concentration of the conjugate base, all divided by the initial concentration of the acid, okay? So with this expression, we refer to the Ka as the acid, acid dissociation constant. So Ka is our acid dissociation constant. Good, all right. Now, 
we can now say that the strength of an acid, the strength of an acid, we can define it as a concentration of H plus ions, H plus ions, this one, in its aqueous solution at a given temperature, because these things vary with temperature. So from this particular equation, we can also say that the Ka here is directly proportional to H plus concentration. So what does that mean? What it means is that when we have a high Ka, so if Ka is increasing, if it is high, they will say that the acid or H plus concentration will also increase. So to simply put it, strong acids are going to have high Ka values and a weak acid will have a low Ka value because the concentration of H plus that they are able to produce in solution is directly proportional to the acid dissociation constant. I would say the more the acid dissociates in water, then the stronger the acid. But if it is, if it's full reluctant to dissociate in water, they will say that it is a weak acid. Okay. It's a weak acid. So that is what we are considering here. So this is going to be before. And it's going to be after dissociation. And the same thing here, this is going to be before. And it's going to be after. Right. Good. So you find out that there are some very strong acids there with Ka value, when you take something like um, HSO4 minus per sulfate, it has a Ka which is equal to 1.2 times 10 exponent minus 2. And another acid there is HClO2. It has a Ka of 1.2 times 10 exponent minus 2, just like this one. However, you also find out that there are acids like um, NH4+, plus, which has a Ka value of 5.6 times 10 exponent minus 10. You can also talk of um, phenol, when you take phenol HO, um, C6, H, H5, sorry, H5. It has, a P, it has a Ka value of 1.6 times 10 exponent minus 10. So you realize that these guys here, these two, has a very high Ka value compared to this guy. And we said that the higher the Ka value, the stronger the acid. And the smaller the Ka value, the weaker the acid. So that is one way that we can compare the strength of acids, right? That's why we can look at the strength of acids. Now, I want us to consider some few acids. Let's look at um, the strength of halo or hydrogen halides. The strength of hydrogen halides. Now, these are acids, okay? These are acids of group seven gases. So, when we take um, HF, HCl, HBr, and HI. So, the question is which among these species is the strongest and which of them is the weakest? Now, we can only tell that. When we consider some few things, okay? Now, there are two things that account for the strength of the acid here. We will have to look at the bond strength. We will have to look at the bond strength. Now, in the periodic table, you know, we have fluorine at the top, followed by chlorine, followed by bromine, and then followed by iodine, followed by iodine. So this is the strength of arrangements of the halogens in the periodic table. So what happens with the bond strength? Now the bond strength decreases down the group, okay? The bond strength between these guys, hydrogen and fluorine, and 
hydrogen and Cl, HBr, the bond between the hydrogen and the halogens will decrease, the bond strength will decrease down the group, okay? Will decrease down the group. Now, what is happening is that with decreasing bond strength, with decreasing bond strength comes with increasing uh, acid strength, okay? Increasing acid strength. So let's put that here. So let's say we have bond strength. This is bond strength decreasing bond strength decreasing down the group. What this means is that we'll also be having um will also be having the acid, the strength of the acid increasing down the group. So this is going to be increasing acid strength. So among the species, we'll say that the strongest acid there is hydrogen iodide followed by hydrogen bromide followed by hydrogen chloride and hydrogen fluoride. Another term to talk about is the stability of the conjugate base that is formed. So when you take something like HF, when you dissociate, it will give you H plus and F minus. HCl will give you H plus and Cl minus. And then Br will give us Br minus, and then iodine will also give us iodide H I, I minus. So what happens is that the stability, the more the, the um, negatively charged halide prefers to stay in solution, the stronger the acid. And we know that fluorine here is the most electronegative element. And then the size is also small, so that means that it has high charge density. So it will quickly pick a, a hydrogen to form the hydrogen fluoride pack compared to hydrogen iodide. So we we'll say that we we'll say that increasing stability of the the chlorides would will increase down the group. So as we go down the group, as we go down the group, then we we'll say that the iodine with a negative charge becomes more stable, or as you go down the group, the species having a negative charge become more stable. And as far as it is stable, that means it won't pick a hydrogen or a proton to form its acid pack. Okay? So these are some of the things we consider in determining the strength of halo acid. Now we can also talk about the strength of oxo acids. Now with oxo acids, it is very simple. The more oxygen you have, the stronger the acid. So the greater number of oxygen gives you a stronger acid. So when you pick something like um I take something like H2SO4, so let's put oxo acid H2SO4 and uh, H2SO3. So you find out that sulfuric acid is going to be a stronger acid because it has more oxygen atoms in there compared to SO3. It also comes to the stability of the conjugate base. When this, when SO4, with a charge on SO4 2 minus, there are more oxygens for the electrons to get to the colors across. So when it comes to picking the proton back, it's going to take a longer time compared to the SO3. So we'll say that H2SO4 is a stronger acid than H2SO3. Now we can also consider others like H, HClO4, HClO3. Which one of these do you think is the strongest acid? Again, the one with the most oxygen is the strongest acid. So these are some some pages for the strength of an acid. I hope this video finds becomes useful to you. And if it's so, then remember to like this video and also subscribe. Thank you.